obviously from the moon of the spider. Or scuttled and scurried among and in and the trees behind them. A hissing pack whose sole purpose now was slaying the giant and the necromancer. And even possibly slaying. Without warning, two fell upon the night howler from ahead. Selene screamed, and even Zael let out a gasp as both were thrown free. The necromancer landed just shy of a tree, drawing an arch symbol in the air with his dagger. Zael focused on the two at the head of the approaching pack. The pair suddenly stopped, glancing back at their cohorts, and with the same zealousness with which they had hunted the trio, turned on their fellows. They taken her, but the rustling of branches to his right finally alerted Zael to her whereabouts. and ran wildly, in her frenzy state obviously not entirely certain of her trying to grab at her cloak. A nightmarish form rose out of the forest ahead of her. The creature seized a startled Selene in a forearm grip. The fangs went. And a second later, the horror squealed. A fire seemed to blossom from its back, burst into flames. Once more turned from him, Zael brought up the dagger. Forgive me for this, Selene. He whispered. He touched her on the back of the head with a hilt. Selene let out a slight gasp. Come as dedicated and respected a companion as Captain Kentrell Dumont had been in Yure. The forest dweller had risked his life more than once for Zael, and because of Zael for Selene and Sardak as well. The final choice was the one that he most feared. It was possible that Jitten's servants had returned to their master because Zael and Selene were no longer of primary significance to either the ambitious noble or Karibitis. If Sardak's blood was indeed sufficient to their vile task, then in returning from them, Zael had ensured their triumph. And he stopped, dead in his tracks. Selene imitated him. The necromancer took a step in the direction of the ruins and Karibitis. A branch snapped. The necromancer spun, expecting either the demonic creatures or perhaps, by some miracle, the night howler. Instead, he heard the snort of a horse. The riders suddenly charged in from and in all sides, all with weapons drawn and pointed in the general directions of the Rathmanian. Fate is surely with me. He crowed. The elusive Zael at last. My family came to the conclusion that you were no longer in the city, which is why I volunteered to lead this hunting party myself. Still, I never thought my luck would be so good. The officer drew his sword and looked ready to behead the necromancer. Now we can be rid of your evil doings. Listen to me, Sayo protested. The kingdom is in danger. You must... Silence, Kerr shouted one of the other soldiers. He made a wild swing at the necromancer who was forced to jump back or be cut. Selene imitated his action. The patrol leader swore. How dare you play her like that? Remove whatever champion you have upon her, sorcerer. If you even hope for any mercy. Rather doubting that he would be granted mercy under any circumstances, Zael nonetheless willingly obeyed. Whatever his own fate, he would do what he could to save Selene. A simple gesture with his hand was all that was needed. The noblewoman coughed. Blinking, she slowly registered the presence of not just the necromancer, but the armed party as well. Her gaze focused specifically on the lead rider. Alec? Captain Maothius, please, my lady. He touched the front brim of his helmet in respect to her. And may I say that I am pleased that you look unharmed by this wretch. Who? Zael? My lady, interjected the hood spellcaster. It is essential that you go with these men to General Torion and tell him what we have witnessed. Be still, you! growled the soldier who had swung at Zael earlier. This time, the flat of his blade caught the Rathmanian on the shoulder. With a grunt, Zael stumbled a few steps forward before regaining his balance. Selene grew livid. 
Stop it! Turning to the captain, Selene added, Alec, Captain Mavis, Zael is my friend, and just saved my life. He is a heretic, and a danger to the kingdom. A heretic, is he? And are you now a warrior of the Zacharim Church? And what danger is he, pray tell? It's only because of him and Sardak. Selene faltered. Poor Sardak. She stiffened. If it's a villain you seek tonight, Captain Mathis, then you should look for Lord Aldrich Jitten. He meant to have me sacrifice tonight. As Zyle expected, the officer looked dubious. You are telling me that Lord Aldrich Jitten, a senior ranking member of the Council of Nobles, intended to have you sacrifice, my lady? To what, if I may ask? A spider demon of some sort. It... He cut her off. Clearly you are still under some enchantment of this foul one. Either that or your mind, distraught by the trials it's gone through, has mixed this man up with the Lord Jitten. He will not listen to reason, Zael told Selene. It might be best if you... Reason? Scoff the leader. I've heard nothing remotely resembling reason. Surprisingly, Captain Mathis sheathed his sword. It's obvious to me that this situation is more delicate than I desire. We'd have to take both of you back to the general, where he'll get all of this nonsense out of your head. If you'll pardon me for saying so, Lady Nisardo. Before she could protest as he went on. As for you, Necromancer, you've bought yourself a reprieve. A temporary one at best. Bernard, bind that cursed wrist behind him. Yorick, your horse for the lady. Double up with Samuel. This horse is the largest and strongest beast. Aye! Shouted the man in question. Bernard, a bearded veteran with a scar across his nose, walked up to Zael as if the latter were Diablo himself. Hold your mitts behind you. He gruffly ordered. The necromancer obeyed. Bernard swore when he got a closer look at Zael's right hand. Captain, it's right away to the bone. There's little else but that and some sinew. Well, what did you expect from one of his kind? It's still a hand, and don't you worry, if he tries anything, it's just revives up. You understand that, Master Zayu? At that moment, another howl echoed through the night. Some of the soldiers looked around anxiously. Damn beasts are acting up again, muttered Yorick, who had dismounted. Just a bunch of hounds calling to the moon. Their leader interjected. If there's anything unnatural about it, the cause stands before you. Zael paid him no mind. The Rothmanian more interested in the moon itself. It was all he could do to keep his concern masked. The limbs of the sinister shadow now spread nearly to the bottom. So, the moon of the spider was both an artifact and a phase of the lunar orb. Jin had one already, and now the second had nearly come into phase. Zayo could only guess what would happen when the true moon resembled the representation. He knew that, at the very least, it would spell catastrophe for the city. Eyes where I can see them. The captain insisted. He and the rest of the soldiers appeared oblivious to the unsettling sight above. Sayo could not go back to the city after all. There evidently was no more time. He had to return, and return quickly, to where Karibidus and the noble worked their dire deeds. He twisted slightly, 
causing the pouch at his side to jostle. Captain Mayotis instantly focused on the bag. Bernard, see what's in there. Bernard looked none too pleased, but he moved to obey. However, as his fingers touched the pouch, an angry voice shouted, Just what do you think you're manhandling there? Bernard leapt back. Several of the horses snorted, and more than one stirred nervously. Do I go laying my mitts on you? Continued Humbart. Do I? I should say not. Of course, the fact I don't have any shouldn't matter. The horses began to shy. York fought to control his. Zael threw himself toward the unmounted York, colliding with the distracted man. Although much wider and heavier than the slim Rothmanian, York tumbled back. With a single smooth motion, Zael leapt onto the saddle. He reached his skeletal hand out and his dagger flew up from the ground and into his hand. A gaping Bernard watched the scene unfold without so much as moving a muscle. The only one to react, in fact, was Captain Meathis. He drew his sword and started after Zael. Samuel, you're in charge of the Lady Nisardo. Take her back to the rest of the men. You six, after me. I want that fur. Selene reached for the necromancer. Zael, take me with you. He shook his head. You must warn General Torion. Tell him something terrible will happen tonight. He must guard the walls with flame. Warn him to watch for spiders. Zayu. If she said anything else, he could no longer hear her. The horse he had stolen was an excellent runner, as the Rathmanian had suspected. But so too were those of the men chasing him. Zayu cursed that part of the balance that seemed to insist upon his being pursued by one foe after another. Captain Mathis and his men were a special thorn in his side for they pursued him out of ignorance. He strove to save their lives, yet they saw him as the monster, not the elegantly clad and noble-born Lord Jitten. Caribitis must laugh at my antics, Zael thought bitterly. I have been as merely a flea to him. The wolves continued to howl, Zael glanced again at the moon, the shadow upon which more and more resembled a gargantuan arachnid seeking to devour it. The Rathmanian feared that he was already too late. Captain Mathis and his band silently raced after him, swords at the ready. The soldiers spread out among the trees, each trying to follow a path that would enable him to catch up to his quarry. General Torion would no doubt decorate the man who brought him Zael's head. Deeper and deeper into the forest, the necromancer rode, never quite able to lose his pursuers. Paradoxically, it was not so much for his own self that he desired to do so. There was yet the risk that Lord Jitten's grotesque servants might also be hunting for him, and Zael feared that the unsuspecting captain might ride right into them, yet there was nothing he could say or do that would make the soldiers turn back, nothing that except turn himself over to their mercy. With that in mind, Zael urged his mount to greater swiftness. He glanced again at the moon, saw that the shadow had all but engulfed it, then focused on the dark landscape. A frown crossed his features. Only now did he notice the utter quiet of his surroundings. The wolves, indeed all the animals, had seized their anxious calling. Unable to resist the rough mane, he looked up yet again at the shadowed moon. But as he did, something ahead made his horse shy. The trained animal suddenly reared. It was all Zayo could do even to hold on. His steed kicked wildly at the darkness, then jerked around. The necromancer tumbled off. <laughs>